Welcome back. Max already gave you a great introduction into AWS. So what AWS is, how you can create your account and a lot more. Now I would like to take this chance and show you one specific service or tool of AWS. And this tool is QuickSight. This is the business intelligence or data analysis tool of AWS. Now if you have an AWS account right now, you can simply go to this page right here and press on to sign up for free. You then need to enter some information to arrive at this page right here. Here you can simply select the standard edition of QuickSight, which is totally enough for the purpose of this video. And then you can also see that you have the first user, well, for free actually, and that this user also gets one gigabyte of spy space. Spice is simply the internal storage of QuickSight, which allows you to, well, save your data to that. Now, as always when working with AWS, if you want to dive deeper and to play around more, make sure to take a look at the pricing again. You can find the QuickSight pricing options or details right here. Now, then you can continue with your registration or with the creation of your account, and then you arrive at this screen right here. This might look slightly different in your case, because you probably have some sample data right here. I deleted those, that's why they are not visible right there. But the important thing is that right now we have our starting point and we can begin with our little project. So we are in QuickSight right now and what do we see right here? Well, as I said, not a lot in my case. In your case probably some sample files, so you can take a look at them if you want to. But in our case, we want to create a new analysis, because in this screen you see all the analysis that you have. And in QuickSight, the analysis is of course kind of the last step, so the step where you created all your visuals to display your data. Now we want to create our own analysis and to be able to visualize data, we need data. So if we now go to new analysis, right here, then you might again see some sample data sets in your case, in my case there is nothing. So let's go to a new data set right here. And right here, we can see that we can connect QuickSight to a lot of different data sources. Before we continue, one quick note. If you want to find out more about this or about QuickSight in general, I would be really happy to welcome you in my Udemy course. In this course, I will give you an overview of QuickSight and a lot of different functions it offers. You can find the link to this course down there in the video description at a special discount price. Now enough of the commercial for now I think, let's continue right here. Because we saw that we can connect QuickSight to a lot of data sources, but we will simply use the upload a file option right here. And well, to upload a file we need a file first. So let's find one. And you can simply use this source file that you can find on this page. The link to that is of course also provided down there in the video description. Now you can see that this file refers to crime incidents in the city of Hartford. Well, maybe a city not everybody knows, but it's not about the city, it's about the data. So this is perfectly fine actually. Now if we scroll down right here, to this section right there, then we can simply press download at the CSV, because we should use the CSV file for this little project. So press download right here. And now that the download is finished, we can simply click on to upload a file right here. Now select the file we just downloaded and press open. And again, wait a few seconds because, well, still the file is quite big with 90 megabytes, so this might take a few seconds depending on the internet connection that you have. We finished the upload, so we can now decide what we want to do next. And we basically have two options. We can press on to next to continue there and by that start our analysis. But actually, that's not the best idea, because as I said, we have two different steps in QuickSight. The analysis, which is the last step where we visualize our data. But before we analyze that data, we should take a look at our data and by that create our data set based on the information we can see right here. Now to enter this data preparation section of QuickSight, we simply have to press edit settings and prepare data right here. And now we are in the data preparation section of QuickSight. As I said, we have the preparation and the analysis. In the preparation, so right here, we specify what information we really want to have to be imported into QuickSight and by that to be available in the analysis later. And if you look to the right right here, we can see that we have a lot of columns. And if we scroll down, we have a lot of rows also. 
But these are not all of the rows that you have in your source data and by that in your later data set. This is just a preview that should give you an impression of the structure of the data that you have. Keep that in mind. However, if we scroll up again, right here, and maybe to the left to see the first column again, oops, and like this, so this is fine. Well, then we can see that we have some column names right here. I can increase the width if you want to, so you can read that better. And we have the format automatically being detected by QuickSight. So if you click right here, you can see that the second column is formatted as a date, which is correct. And if you click right there, then you can see that the first column is formatted as an integer, which is also totally fine. And this is it actually. I don't want to change the column names or the formats right here. The only thing that I don't like is the amount of columns that we have. Because actually we want to create one single visual and for the purpose I only need two kinds of information. We need the date, which we have right here, and we need the crime type. As I said, this data set is about crime statistics. So we only need two columns actually. Well, and we cannot delete or hide a column right here, but if you look at the left part right now, well, you can see that case number is right here, date is right there, and so on. And this is important, because right here we have the different columns. But if you want to work with that columns in QuickSight, then these columns are referred to as fields right there. So working with columns in QuickSight means working with fields. Well, and if I look into this field segment right here, then we can select none, so unselect all of the fields basically. Then we can see, well, nothing to display, this is not good, but now we can simply click onto this box right here next to date, like this. And now we see that we have our date column back, which is really good, but we also need a second column with the, well, crime type actually, and this could be this one here, so category, so let's tick that also, oops. This didn't work, it did work, so it's great, it's fine. Well, and now we see that we only have these two columns now. And this is important, because unselecting the columns or the fields right here means that the remaining fields will not be imported into the analysis and by that not be available right there. So keep that in mind. However, this looks pretty good right now. We have the date topic right here and don't worry about the formatting right there. The important thing is that this symbol indicates that this is recognized as a date and we can take care about the way this date will be displayed in the analysis, well, in the analysis itself, so no need to change that right here. Well, and as we are now ready, we can simply press on to save and visualize right there. Now it again takes a few seconds because as you can see, now the data is imported into SPICE you remember back then, this one gigabyte spy space you got for free as the first user of QuickSight. And we can also see that our import is complete, which is nice, but the main thing is that zero rows were skipped. This means our entire data set that we now created was imported into this analysis section of QuickSight, or into SPICE actually. Now we can close this window actually right here. And well, now we want to create a visual and you can select the different visual types in QuickSight down here. I will simply select the heat map, so only one visual. So after clicking right here onto this heat map, you can see that the field wells are displayed. This is basically the area where you can define what type of information should be displayed in this chart. And if you look at these field wells, well, you can see that we have dimensions, so these blue fields right here, you can find them right there, our date and category. And these green fields, the measures, which, well, you would normally find right there, but we didn't include any measure into our data set, so we cannot select any measure right here in the analysis. Now, what's the difference? Well, basically, a dimension is a category. This could be a product type, for example, or in our case, the category of a specific crime. A measure then is the value behind that, so something that can be aggregated for example. This could be the revenue. Now we don't have any measure in here. But this is not a problem, because if we now simply take the category and drag it to the rows right here, and then take the date and drag it to the columns area right there, and if we now close these field rows maybe, well then we can see that the values are displayed based on the count. 
This means simply counts how many times a specific crime took place on a specific date. And this is the reason why you normally need these measures in QuickSight, but for our purposes the count option is totally fine. So we have this heat map right now. And this heat map now indicates, well, the darker the color is, the more crimes happened at that day. But there are two problems that I can see right here. The first thing is that, well, I think we have way too many dates in here, so we should limit that maybe. And additionally, well, we cannot read what type of crime we have right there. Additionally, we have way too much crime types right here. So we should apply some filters to that maybe. Well, you can do this easily in QuickSight by simply going to the filter area right there. Now press on to create run right here. And now you can select the filter type or what you want to base this filter on. We said we want to filter the date first, so we click on to date right here. Now we click on to this between none option right there. Well, and now we can simply define a time range. So we click on to the start date and let's say we start in, I don't know, January maybe 2012 for example, at the 1st of January, and it should end in December 2014 and the 31st, like this. If we now press apply right here, well, then we see that our visual changed immediately. It looks better now, but still, as I said, I think we have way too much categories, so crime categories in here. Let's maybe select just some of the darker ones. So maybe this one here. Oops, this is larceny. Then maybe that one. The crimes against the public. And the property damage accident. So we now know that we want to have these three categories only. So we can apply another filter by simply pressing right here. And now click onto this symbol right there, onto this filter symbol actually, like that. And now we won't filter for the date but for the category right here. Now we again click onto this message right there. And now we can find a filter list down here. Now let's first unselect all because we only want to select three of them. So let's press right here. And now select larceny. And what else do we say? Crimes against the public. And I think the last one was property damage accident, this one right here. And if we now go back to our visualizing area right here, well, then we see that our heat map looks kind of interesting right now. Because as you can see, we have an indication that the property damage accident in 2014, well, this happened a lot. Whereas crimes against the public, for example, decreased in 2014. So we are almost done with that visual. But I want to show you one last thing. Because if you now go to that field wells again by clicking onto this arrow right here and now change the date by clicking right here, so the aggregation of the date actually from a year to a month like this and now minimize the field wells, well then you can see that you get a more detailed view. So we now have a monthly overview of these three crime categories that we selected. And for example we can see now that property damage accidents happened a lot in February 2014. And this is it actually. I only wanted to show you how easy it is to import data to QuickSight, to then create your own data set and to then visualize that data. As I said before, if you want to dive deeper into QuickSight, I would be really happy to see you in my Udemy course. Otherwise, I can only say thanks for watching and see you in the next videos. Bye bye.